To a large extent, spiritual enemies are not after our money only. They want our mind. They want to attack our attitudes, our character, our heart. They are after our faith, our joy, and our peace. We must understand that we are not only being attacked over tangible things in our lives. The enemy is fighting over things we cannot see, especially those visions and dreams that result to fulfillment of our destiny and restoration of mankind from darkness into the marvelous light of God. Spiritual enemies you see do not just attack any how person. They don't attack people that are idle in life. They don't attack people that are still living in sin because these people still belong to them. They attack people that know where they are coming from and and where they are going. They attack people that have discovered the purpose of their creation and they are willing to pursue it and achieve it and create records. Our topic today is the dangerous spiritual enemy. Before we go into this topic, I want us to pray. Lord, we thank you because you have armed us with strength for the battle set ahead of us. We thank you again and again for you have subdued our enemy under our feet. We appreciate you in advance for removing the obstacles in our path. Please, Lord, guide and protect our step as we follow your lead. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our topic today says the dangerous spiritual enemies. You see, Apostle Paul, in his writing, identified spiritual enemies called principalities and powers in high places. These enemies work against our progress in life. They work against our prayer, our destiny, and our success in life. They can go to the extent of hindering the answers to our prayers and make us to operate under closed heaven for a very long time, especially when we are not prayerful. Most often, we focus on the wrong enemies because we can see them and we can touch them. We know them by name. We are in the same office with them. So we tend to believe that they are our worst enemy. We try to fight them back when they strike with their hatred, bitterness, wickedness, anger, rejection, frustration. Let me tell you this one thing. Humans are not your worst enemy. No human has the power to cause he that God has blessed. Apostle Paul cautioned us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual enemies are one of our biggest and worst enemies. They hate us for no reason, and their focus is for us not to fulfill our mandate here on earth. They cannot, you know, do without hurting us. We cannot see them even. We cannot touch them with our hands. But they work every day to make sure that they disrupt anything that will make us to fulfill purpose. They don't fight idle men. They don't fight men that are living in sin. And they don't fight men that are walking contrary to the plan and purpose of God. This enemy fights men of purpose. They fight men on assignment for God. And they fight men with vision. They fight extraordinary men. In the book of Daniel chapter 10, the Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days. But the very first day that Daniel started his prayer, God answers his prayer. God released the answer to Daniel's prayer on the very first day he started prayer. But there was principalities and power called the Prince of Persia that held Angel Gabriel hostage with the answers to Daniel's prayer. There is no prayer that the enemies, which means Satan, attack more than the prayer of salvation, deliverance, restoration, confession, forgiveness, and breakthrough. That was exactly the prayer of Daniel while on exile in Babylon. While Daniel was on exile in Babylon, he never had any attack from Satan and his agents. But the moment he started praying for the children of Israel, for their freedom and liberation, the enemy arose to fight him. Let's look at the main prayer points of Daniel's prayer. If we break down Daniel's prayer into bullet points, 
it will look like God, here is how we have moved in the past. Here is how we have messed up. You warn us about the consequences of our sin, but we never listen. God, as we are experiencing these consequences, I call upon your mercy for the children of Israel to come for our deliverance, to come for our liberation. A key part of Daniel's prayer was confession, seeking God's forgiveness, repentance, restoration for his people. That made the spiritual enemies to strike and prevent God's intervention. When we are swimming in sin, Satan rejoices because we are lost like him. But the moment we try to trace our step back to God, Satan will try to keep us under his control. Daniel never had any confrontation from these spiritual powers until he started interceding for the children of Israel. These prince of Persia were enemies to Daniel and the children of Israel and not the angels. Spiritual enemy fight our breakthrough, our progress in life and our success. They fight God's blessings in our lives. Sometimes we think that what we are going through is natural or normal, but I will tell you it is not. And that is why we must learn how to pray. We must learn how to call upon the name of the Lord over every situation in our lives. No problem is too small for you to call upon the name of God. God has already responded to our prayers, but these principalities and powers are holding the answers to our prayer. Learn how to pray as a believer. Say no to any power this year. Not because you can do it on your own, but because you know what the scriptures have said to you, that you have the power to decree and to declare things and they will come to pass. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Be consistent and persistent in your prayer until you receive answers. Daniel never stopped praying. He continued Continue for 21 days, and God had no option than to send Angel Michael, who is the angel of war, to fight Daniel's enemy. These enemies are real and active even in our lives today. We need to fight against them. Be persistent and intensify your prayer for the things you are praying for until you see God's intervention. Please, I want to encourage you, don't give up. I want us to understand that there is power in prayer. Our prayer signal heaven. Our prayer alert heaven. When we pray, God listen. When we pray, storm are stilled. When we pray, closed doors are open. When we pray, relationship get restored. When we pray, sickness get healed. When we pray, hope get rekindled. When we pray, strength is renewed. When we pray, answers come. Don't lose faith about what you are praying for today. God is faithful. His answers will come at just the right time. You see, prayer to a believer is a way of life. Prayer is not meant to be prayed when we have emergency. You must have to make prayer a habit and when the needs arise, you will be an overcomer. The sincere, humble prayer of a true worshiper, a true believer, ascend to heaven. Thank you for being with us from the beginning of this video till now. I pray that our God will bless you richly in Jesus' name. See you in our next video.